If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to solve the question before listening on. In order to determine the maximum compression of the spring, we're going to use the principle of the conservation of energy. And according to that principle, the total initial energy present is going to be equal to the total final energy present. Now initially, we know that the block is simply rested at the top of this plane. And so the only energy that's present is going to be the gravitational potential energy, which we can symbolize as UG. For the final energy, the story is a bit more complicated. As the block slides down the ramp from its initial point to where the spring is located, we know that friction is present. And because of friction, there's going to be an increase in what is known as the thermal energy of the block. Some textbooks represent the thermal energy as ETH. So we're going to have some thermal energy present as the block slides from its initial point to where the spring is located. But then once the block contacts the spring, right about here, it's going to continue moving forward. As it continues moving forward, it's still sliding across the surface of the ramp. And so there still will be more thermal energy generated. So we would have to add a second term of thermal energy. Perhaps we can call this thermal energy 2 and the other thermal energy 1. In addition, as the block is sliding and pressing against the spring, the amount of energy stored in the spring is going to increase. There's going to be spring potential energy produced. And we know that the amount of spring potential energy is one half times the spring constant times the amount by which the spring compresses squared. And indeed, it's this, this term here that we are looking for in this question. And finally, let's not forget that when the block reaches its final resting point at the bottom of the ramp, it's still going to be located some height above the surface. And because of that fact, there's going to be gravitational potential energy once again. We should probably call this gravitational potential energy the final and this the initial. So hopefully all four of those types of energy in the final scenario make sense. If they don't, please let me know in the comments. Now let's come up with an expression for the initial gravitational potential energy. We know that gravitational potential energy is the mass times g times the initial height of the object. And in the picture we would represent that initial height as this distance right here. Now in essence we have a right triangle. We know that this angle is 25 degrees. We know that the block will travel 250 millimeters before it hits the spring, but then it's going to continue on and compress the spring by some amount that we have called delta x. Now, using a little bit of trigonometry, we can easily find an expression for this initial height. We have the side that's opposite to the 25 degree angle as well as the hypotenuse, so that brings to mind the sine function. We know that the sine of the 25 degree angle would equal the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. Notice that the hypotenuse will be 250 plus delta x. And because the 250 is in millimeters, it's going to be wise to convert that into the standard unit of meters. So we would just move the decimal place over three times. So we have 0.25 plus delta x. We could solve this equation for y sub i by multiplying both sides by the 0.25 plus delta x. And when we do that, we get this expression for y i. So we're going to substitute that expression for y sub i into our initial gravitational potential energy expression. Now on to the first thermal energy. We know that thermal energy is equal to the kinetic frictional force multiplied by a distance. In turn, the kinetic frictional force is equal to the coefficient of kinetic friction times the normal force. Now, for a block that's located on a ramp, we know that the normal force is equal to mg times the cosine of theta. And that's always going to be true for an object situated on a ramp. The normal force of that object will be equal to mg cosine theta. So we can substitute that expression in for the normal force. And so what we want to note about this thermal energy is the distance 
And remember that the first thermal energy is for when the block slides all the way up to the spring, and that distance was the 0.25 meters. So we'll be substituting in 0.25 meters for that distance. Let's go ahead and take this expression and fill it in for the first thermal energy. For the second thermal energy, we basically have the same expression. We're going to have the coefficient times the normal force. But then the distance is going to be different because for this distance, for the second thermal energy, the block is starting here and it's sliding some unknown distance until this spring becomes fully compressed. And so this distance right here is unknown to us. That's actually what we're looking for. So we're going to have to substitute in delta x for that distance. Now we already have an expression for the spring potential energy, so we'll fill that in. And finally, to the final gravitational potential energy, we're going to have the mass times g times y sub f, the final height. Let's go back and look at a right triangle here. Again, this angle here is 25 degrees. We know that for the final height, the hypotenuse of this triangle would be delta x. And just to make sure that that's clear, just go back to the original diagram and look right here. This would be the final right triangle that we're looking at. Here's the 25 degree angle. And the distance would be the hypotenuse of this right triangle. And so that would be our delta x. And that's what we've labeled right here on this triangle. We could set up the sine expression once again. And then we could multiply both sides of this equation by delta x to solve for y sub f. So we'll take that expression and plug it in for the y f. So here is the final equation. Why don't we go ahead and just clean it up a little bit. Now remember, our goal is to find delta x. Maybe the best thing to do now would be to plug in all the known values. We'll pick up our calculators and maybe simplify a little bit here. We can multiply these two numbers together and also this number. We can multiply all of this together, all of this. Simplify here, and then 20 times 9.8 times sine of 25. We can go ahead and distribute this 82.8. Notice on both sides we have a term of 82.8 delta x, so we can cancel that out. Let's subtract 20.7 over to the right side. And then we're left with a quadratic equation, so we could use the quadratic formula to solve for delta x. And when you follow through with the quadratic formula, you should get two values. One of them is 0 0.0966 meters, and then the other value is actually going to be a negative value. It's negative 0.136, but we can correctly reject the negative result. And so the final answer for delta x would be 0 0.0966 meters. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, click the thumbs up and also subscribe so you can stay tuned for additional videos. Remember, you can send in your own question to the email address.